Uh, Kenny, I've got to, I want to, if I can, Robbie, just before you dropped in, he, he was regaling us some tales of what you kind of meant to, to Rob growing up and, and being a legend as you are still in the city, a legend up in my part of the world as well, in Scotland, of course. Your recollections of Rob, what, what do you first remember, you know, coming across Robbie Fowler? Uh, the first instance was, was being at Melwood, and I was... It was it was the night time because Robbie had been training with the kids. Um, he was only fifteen or something himself, and I was coming out of Melwood to come home, and he was standing at the the bus stop. So I stopped and asked him if he wanted a lift. He went, "No." I asked, he said, "You're going the other way." I said, "I'm not going anyway. It doesn't matter." So I took him into into town. Uh, and was dropping them off, and I saw him the next day. I said, "How did you go home? All right?" He went, "Yeah, yeah." He said, "I was gutted." He said, "My dad was gutted." He said, "Why?" He said, "Because he said he never none of his mates saw him coming out of your car, <laughs> 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 but he never saw the meter. The meter was blocking <laughs> up." <laughs> to be fair, you're probably true there as well. You. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I always think that whenever obviously I think you and I I mean I'm so lucky enough to well to class you as a friend now um, and I always think when look I loved you as a player obviously uh, as a manager you were superb but I think when you done that with me as as a kid you know taking me home when you didn't need to I think that spoke volumes to you as a person and uh, that's just a type of person you are you know honestly I've got yeah, so so much time for you that was it that was. Uh... That was something to do with the way I was brought up as well. Not particularly with my mum and dad, but when we were at Celtic as young boys, used to the main bus route was across the road for Celtic Park, and we'd be standing waiting for the bus. And one of the first team players would pull in in their car and they said, Where are you going? Well, obviously, we're standing at the bus stop. So we <laughs> into town, jump in, I'll give you a lift, and then he'd take you the wrong way, wouldn't he? <laughs> drop you off somewhere. Like we didn't even, well, we knew where we were, but we didn't know where we wanted to go. So instead of taking us to town, he'd take us the opposite direction. He said, Oh, jeez, I don't know where the city centre is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't going to do that, but that's what they did to us. But I don't see, I don't, if you can help somebody, why would you not help them? No, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned there that the players used to do that at Celtic. Who uh, was your hero? As a wee boy, as Robbie was looking up to you, who did you look up to when you played Celtic youth? Dennis Law. It was. When I was younger than Celtic, yeah. Dennis Law, when I was a wee boy. He was Scottish icon playing in Italy. You never had the television coverage you've got now, so if he was playing at Hamden, if your mum and dad would allow you, you'd go and watch a game and watch Dennis what, what, what was what was so good about Dennis Law just his charisma it was just something about him like he, he always played with the the cuff his sleeve right in his thinking like that with his fingers and uh, he could he could leap like a salmon and he just he just iconic I don't know really why but he was iconic would, would, I, would he would he be I, in a he, player I was, did you I was, model your uh, game on him? Did I play a game, yeah. No, no did you model your game on him or, or no. were you a totally different player? No, I just played. Jesus, it's bad enough to try to be yourself without trying to copy somebody <laughs> else, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, for me, I was always, you're better to be yourself and then you've only one person to blame. <laughs> It's quite remarkable. It's quite remarkable, Kenny. Like when you go through your career, and I appreciate Cristiano Ronaldo in today's world, but you you played over three hundred games for Celtic, legend at the club, arguably the greatest player that Celtic have ever had. You've then gone down south. You've played over five hundred for Liverpool. You're without question, in my belief, the greatest Liverpool player of all time. That's rare to be the greatest at two clubs the longevity at two clubs is quite remarkable does that give you a great source of pride? No it's, everybody's entitled to their opinion you don't need to agree with their opinion but at the end of the day I was fortunate that I played for Celtic and Liverpool because at that time they were the two most successful clubs uh, 
obviously the Celtic just won the European Cup when, when Dan McGrain and I joined the same day. Uh, and we just took on for there. And the time that they players gave to us as young boys, because we used to train with them, uh, and they, they were really encouraging and helpful. And although they'd won the European Cup, uh, they never had any arrogance or big headedness about them. They looked after you. And when we, Danny and I used to meet in Argyle Street, he was coming for one side of the city and I was coming for the other. And that was a convenient place for us to meet to get the bus to Celtic Park. The two were a bag of nerves and that was only training. <laughs> but when we get in, they settled us down and they were really good to us. And, and that must have helped a lot because I don't think it was a coincidence that there was an awful lot of players, young players at that time, breaking through into the Celtic first team. Mm. And then you get the move to Liverpool. Talk to us about how that move came about, Kenny, your, your memories of that when the, the phone rang or you got a tap on the shoulder to say, hey, Liverpool Football Club, weren't you? Um, no, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't unappreciative or unhappy at Celtic, but I just thought to myself, it's, this isn't a rehearsal here, you only get one go. And I want to go and try and play at the highest level I could. And also, I had a great year in the go a tour of the city after you win something because in Glasgow you couldn't do that um, so when it came about I got married to Marina um, and I thought oh, this might be the best time for us to go anywhere so um, I'd asked for a transfer and said look no I don't want it but I want to have a go down south and I'd been at Liverpool when I was 15 and I was lucky because if I had a choice to go anywhere, and I'm not saying it in hindsight, at the time I was, I would have, I said it as well uh, to Marina that if we get a chance, Liverpool would be the best place for us. But obviously Kevin was there at the time. Then Kevin said that he wanted to go. So um, we were pre-season training. The club went to Australia. I never went. Uh, came back and we were playing pre-season matches. I'd stayed at home and trained with the reserves, which was no problem. Um, we played a pre-season match at Dunfermline and the first team had come back by then and it was the first team we were playing in. And I was captain. But by joke, and on that night, picked the ball up and threw the ball to Danny McGrain and said, go on, Danny, you take the team out. So the rest of them, as we're going down, they used to come out. It was strange. He came out the dressing room door and he went down steps that were outside onto the, like, got to Lord's Cricket, you know, he uh -huh. went down the steps and got out onto the pitch. And uh, the boys started laughing. Oh, you must be off the work. I said, I've not got a clue. And Bob Paisley and uh, John Smith, the chairman, were at the game that night. I never knew. Came back, went to the father in law's pub uh, afterwards and Big job. He must have had radar on us. He picked up the phone and phoned up and said, Do you still want to go? I said, Yeah. He said, Get yourself up here then, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm not going to tell anybody. Jumped in the car, drove up, and Bob Paisley and uh, John Smith were there. So I think the conversations that we need to had, uh, have were done in uh, two or three minutes. And the only thing that was they were discussing was the transfer fee. I was off and they picked us up in the morning, brought us down. So I got I was lucky I got where I wanted to go. Brilliant. Kenny, you know you just said there, so you know when you were at Celtic, did you did you say the team went to Australia? Yeah. I mean I'm <laughs> I'm thinking in the seventies, getting to Australia. What did you have to go by boat? <laughs> I never went, I don't know. <laughs> That's probably why you never went. <laughs> Just about, the team just about made it back for the start of the season. <laughs> well, this was the start of the season, the game at Dunfermline. But I, uh, we'd been, Scotland had been in, um, they went to South American tour because it, the World Cup was in Argentina, 78. So they went to be a wee tour. They played uh, Chile, 1-4-2, drew one each with Argentina and Buenos Aires and get beat 2-0 with Brazil. And then we came back, so geez, after being there and then having to go to Australia, 
It's a bit of a trek as well. Mm. No, I'm sure they, they would have flown, wouldn't they? Stopped at Singapore and then on the Australia. <laughs> I don't know, I never went. <laughs> It was it was a, it was a, one of them ten pound trips where you just pay ten pound and just get everyone <laughs> on the boat with them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> couldn't, me. couldn't get you insured, I think, Kenny. Uh, you, no, you're no, playing... no, they, no, they were Celtic were brilliant for us. For oh me, yeah, they were brilliant. Uh, so and... it was the, I didn't want to be disrespectful, although it was going to be hurtful to leave. It was hurtful for myself as well because I was born and brought up in Glasgow. And they move away, and Marina was the same. She's born and brought up there, so it's great for the women that they they get up and move as well. Yeah. What What were your first memories? I'm taking you back a number of years now, but the first memories, the first few days at Liverpool Football Club, who who kind of took you under your wing? Who Who was the man that that said, "Hey, listen, you're going to be all right here." Me. <laughs> I thought it was going to be all right. No, I came down and. Bob, we came down in Bob Paisley's car. Uh, John Smith sat beside him. And uh, Emily Hughes popped into the Holiday Inn that used to be the uh, where Liverpool won is now. They popped in to see us in night time. She said, do you want a drink? I said, well, I don't really drink. So I had a Coca-Cola and had a chat with Emily. Uh, I said, I'm shattered, I need to go in my bed. So I went in my bed and it was a Wednesday. I know that because we trained Thursday. So the boys were really welcoming and they were really determined to be successful again because they'd won the, I think they, they won the, the European Cup, obviously. And they won, I think, the league they beat me man you in the cup final. And they were determined to have, have a similar amount of success the next season. So I thought that does me fine. Mm. Your management career, Kenny, is an interesting one because I, I look at it, and certainly for, for me on the outside, I, I'm still, what am I, 34, despite what Robbie Fowler will tell you. I am 34, Kenneth. Hey, so well, for me... Ken, Ken, Kenny will tell you that as well, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Who said the pictures didn't they lie? <laughs> <laughs> so, so for me growing up, Kenny, I, I was a bit, uh, well, obviously young for your playing career, Young for your first stint as Liverpool manager with those league titles. For 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 me growing up, it was all about Blackburn Rovers. You were front and centre bringing this team who I think four years previously from winning the league, 19th in the second division, if memory serves me, in English football. Your time at Blackburn, Kenny, when you look back on all of your career, was that time right up there as the most special that you had? Oh, Blackburn was a Cinderella story for everybody. Yeah. I mean, uh, nothing would have happened at Blackburn if Jack Walker hadn't been involved in the financial support that he gave. And I think Jack will be the last person uh, of his kind. The local man made good, uh, very wealthy, wanted to put something back into the, <clears throat> the city that he was brought up. And I don't think that's going to happen again, the success that they had. But it would never happen without Jack, and his money coming in was was the start of everything. And for me, uh, just get good staff round about has kept a couple of lads that had already been at Blackburn to give me a bit of an insight into what was going on, um, and they did brilliantly. I mean, the manager gets sacked after two league games, I think. They I don't know. I think they some like one point, and they get beaten a league cup tie, uh, an early round. So the manager got the sack and the guy called Tony Parks took over and he took them from like one point out of, I don't know if it would be three points then, was it? One point anyway, out of two games. He took them up to about mid-table, just below mid-table by the time I joined. So Tony done a great job as well. He settled it down and get them moving. But Blackburn okay. was a fairy tale. Uh, people can rate it whatever way they want. Um, they can say <clears throat> that was better or worse than, than Liverpool. It doesn't matter. You've done what you had to do, and that was it. I think I can speak for everyone. I think obviously everyone knows what type of manager you are, anyway. So obviously, with what you've achieved, what what was your what was your philosophy as a manager? Uh, even if you had a philosophy, was your was your ideo- ideology just about bringing in the best players, or was you a, a certain manager who wanted <laughs> to play a certain formation? 
uh, and getting players for them or whatever the, were the best players available to you? Well, your formations depend on who you have and the way you play and the style you play in is depending on that. But irrespective of tactics or personnel, I think the most important thing is to treat people the way that you would like to have been treated yourself as a player. And you had to have a consideration for the players that you, you had to leave out for games. That was difficult. I think that was a difficult part because it, it's hard to go and say to somebody you're not playing. And you might have an explanation or thought in your mind, but he's got a different thought in his. But at least you're straight with him. And that's that's all I wanted to be. I just wanted to be straight with him. And if if you were wrong, you were wrong. But at least you couldn't say that you, you weren't a genuine man. It was an exhilarating oh. season, that, Kenny. That that year, uh, and the way that it finished as well, and <laughs> May 14th, 1995, that's a date that will be uh, certainly burned into my memory. I, I remember it well sitting there, United at West Ham, Andy Cole and, and his travails down there, and of course, Blackburn at Anfield. I think you went into the final day two points clear. What are your memories of that, Kenny? C- can you remember your team talk that day to the boys? No. <laughs> <laughs> It was just go out and do what you've been doing all season. Oh, you know, I think that's that speaks for itself, doesn't it? If you say to them, I mean, they got where they are because of what they did. So why would you need to change it? Then they were they'd done brilliantly. I mean, but it's, it's easy to say you went to Blackburn and they won the league, but they, they also won the promotion up to the the Premiership through the playoffs. I think they finished sixth. And we won the playoff final against Leicester. Uh, the first year in the Premiership, fourth, second year, second, and the last year we won it. So I don't think by the time we won it, I don't think we were a surprise to anybody. So all they had to do, all they had to do was do what they did for the previous, um, previous three, four years or whatever. Be yourself. You can't be anybody else. You'd be an actor if you wanted to be somebody else, wouldn't you? <laughs> but you must have been. Come on, come on, Kenny. The, the nerves that day. I mean, Jesus, I was a bag of nerves. I still remember. I would have been, what, nine at the time. And that switching Sky Sports did a great job of it. You must have been shitting your pants on that touchline. I was nervous, I. <laughs> but also, sometimes, Robbie knows, sometimes <clears throat> you have a feeling about something when you're going to play and I just had a feeling that we were going to win the league so and you still be nervous but you still had a feeling that you were going to win the league and fortunately we did and I if you were going to win it at Blackburn the other best place to win it that would be more appreciated or would appreciate Blackburn when it would be Liverpool <laughs> when you never that was one of the, my most serial games ever I think so when obviously I wanted to win because I just wanted to win every game and I wanted I wanted Blackburn to win the title uh, obviously because of Kenny and because obviously he didn't want Man U to win uh, and I remember in the game and, and us going and going ahead 1-0 uh, sorry um, James Redknapp scored and, uh, to make it 2-1 I'm thinking do I celebrate here? <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> no. I just didn't know whether to celebrate and I think I think there was a few little claps in the cop but it, I mean the, the, the applause and the rapturous noise that was heard after the game because obviously Blackburn had, had obviously lost the game but won the title was I mean it was just a surreal moment it really was and I, I think I've got a bone to pick with you Kenny actually because uh, Sir Kenny because I've watched uh, a few clips of that and I remember you going up to all the players after the game all the black bear hugging them and I've, on one little shot there's a, and I'm there waiting to give you a high five and you just ran right past me <laughs> Oh, I, was, oh, I wouldn't have been moving I wouldn't have been moving too fast <laughs> I told you, uh, we said that before. I said to Chris, you've got to be quick to get an hamstring. I never got hamstring, so it was all right. Well, no, I was the same. <coughs> right, no. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, they'd been much rather Liverpool had won it. But then it's becomes, as Robbie said, anybody bar one of their closest rivals is, is good. And maybe they never thought Blackburn was a close rival. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of, obviously, your, your close rivals, uh, Sir Ken, um, now, obviously, a lot has been made up about your your rivalry with uh, obviously Sir Alex, and uh, I know I know perfectly good. You're actually very very good friends, aren't you? Ah, uh, Fergie and I go back a long way. 
a long way, right back to, in fact, Marina's dad uh, knew him and Marina met him before. He, I mean, his dad was in the licence trade in Fergie, as was in <coughs> the Northern then, and the footballers in Scotland wanted to buy a pub. So Fergie wanted to learn, teach himself the licence trade that Marina's dad taught him. So then I met Fergie through one of the young lads in Glasgow was at Ibrox and I still lived across the road from Ibrox and uh, we used to meet up if we after training the crowd days in, in the city centre in Glasgow and have a bit of macaroni and cheese and double chips. <laughs> <laughs> so the healthy option went out the window. Um, but and I went over to meet him at Ibrox one day afterwards and we were going to jump in the, the subway into town and uh, he said, oh, we've got a lift. I said, yeah, you've not got a car. He said, no, no, Alec Ferguson's giving us a lift into town. So Fergie gave us a lift into town. Brilliant. Um, that was the first time, really, I had met him. And then uh, he played in the reserve game that I played in. I think it was in 69 or something. Do you, uh, you know, when you, you speak to each other now, do you compare <clears throat> your knighthoods? Just like just just like phone each other up and say hello sir hello sir are you okay sir? <laughs> well, he he calls me Kenny and I call him Fergie. He can get away with that. He can get away with calling you that. No, everybody can get away with that. No bother. <laughs> <laughs> it's what they say under their under their breath that you're worried about. Know what they say in front of you. Brilliant. No, he, I, I... he's he's good as gold. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I look. I, I've seen. He's absolutely really, and I obviously I've got a lot of time for Sir Alex as well. Right. Um, you know, when I was uh, when I was manager of Brisbane, actually, I uh, I reached out to him, and he actually sent me a video with, which I played. Uh, and again, that's you, you appreciate people like that for going out of the way and and giving them a little bit of time, uh, and that's what he done. Well, that's what like he is. If you ask for help, right, he's more than happy to help anybody along the way in the managerial uh, road that, they, that they've chosen to take. And if he can help, he'll help. Can I, can I ask, Kenny, we, Jürgen uh, referenced it after Liverpool won the league a few months back where he said he, after maybe one too many ales at the end of the party, he messaged Fergie. He WhatsApped him and Fergie got straight back to him at three in the morning. Did, did Fergie message you? Did you get a call after winning the league with Blackburn? Did, did Fergie yeah, reach out to, to, to offer you? We exchange letters at the end of the season. If somebody <laughs> wants something, you'd always send a letter out saying congratulations. And <clears throat> and that never changed. Never that changed? Never, no, always. He never had. What's up? Jesus. No, no, no. You've gone back to... Was it horseback? Was it yeah. letters by horseback, was it? Aye. <laughs> Send a telegram if you wanted something. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we always always exchanged the uh, congratulations when if somebody won something. It's rather fitting, Kenny, that you're you're returned to Liverpool. I mean, what are we now? Two thousand and eleven, January eighth. You can tell I've been doing my research. January eighth, two thousand and eleven, you return for your second spell in charge of Liverpool. Your first game that some people might forget was actually against Fergie. It was at Old Trafford in the FA Cup third round. Return, did that totally come out of the blue, that return to, to management? How did that kind of come around? Well, I was on a boat in somewhere near Dubai <laughs> and I got a phone call. Uh, would you would you come back and would you uh, look after it for a wee while? <laughs> if you can get me home, it's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know how I got home, but I got home. Uh, and I never got there till Saturday night. So by the time I, the boys had been prepared for the match, I, you can't come in on a Saturday night and do much, can you? No. But there have been <clears throat> some people said, "Well, why did you go to the game? Why did you not stay away?" Well, if I'm coming in, I'm coming in at the start. I'm not coming in because it's a difficult game, Manchester United. If I'm going to stand beside the boys and ask them to do the same for us, I'm going to be beside them every time. So I went straight to the game. No, I went straight to the hotel and ended the game. Uh, we could beat one now. We got a penalty against us in about 30 seconds. Yeah. 
and then Stephen gets sent off. So it was a quiet day. <laughs> <laughs> did your well, did your did your style change that second time around, Kenny? Obviously, I think what caretaker in two thousand at Celtic, you won the league cup there. Eleven years, quite a long time. Players have changed. The the methodology, as Robbie's already alluded to, football does change a little bit. Outlooks change. Did you change at all in that eleven year period? Yes, yeah, society changes as well, doesn't it? Yeah. There's a, there's a there was a whole movement in that political correctness that managers had to allude to as well. So obviously, when you go back in, it's not like it was when you left. You have to change and adapt a wee bit. But then I think you're doing that in your life as well. So um, you just pre- treat people for what they are, and you've got to understand that when you were young and managing. It was a different philosophy to what it is now. The young boys have different ideals, which is fine, as long as they get themselves on the pitch and prepared as best they possibly can. Mm. And the ideals aren't they going to be disruptive to anybody. You just go along with it. So, Ken, so, you know, in, in terms of what you said there, so obviously society <coughs> changes, players change, obviously managers change, and that's just obviously you as a person. What about technology? So, obviously, your first spell as a, a manager, and I know you do your work on the opposition, but... I know from a Liverpool point of view, our work was done on what we can do. Now, did your did your method change later on? Did you do a lot more work from a technology point of view on the opposition and your own side? I don't think anybody's going into a game without knowing what the opposition's like. Whether you form it in your own mind and you have a wee library upstairs with your opponent, your goalkeeper or, or whatever, or whatever somebody, another team does, I think you've got to have preparation and you've got to know what the other team does mm. if you don't know what they do how do you pick your own team so you, but basically the most important thing and the biggest thing you can dictate is what happens to your team yeah but that's also influenced by what what how they do can, can i when you get back when nowadays most teams play the same most teams have the same philosophies don't they whereas in our days you had Maybe people that were a wee bit more direct than what what uh, other teams were, and you've just got to handle that. And you've got to take that into account, but not to the detriment of your own team. Take it, take them into account, bearing in mind that you're not upsetting your own team. You've got to so, be mindful of opposition, Kenny. Who is, uh, whether it's management or playing, who is the best team? Who is the best team you've ever come up against where you've went? Wow, they are absolutely incredible. I don't Tra- think training was... sessions. Uh, I don't think there was too many. <laughs> Very good, Robert. <laughs> training sessions at Liverpool Football Club. Well, the five or seven was in my strong point. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I remember every Friday, but I know you're trying to answer the question there, but every Friday when you obviously were a manager, I was obviously yeah. uh, you know, young kid coming in. Every Friday, uh, Sir Kenny would get the uh, the chocolate biscuits out. <laughs> and o- on a Friday, it was a staff feeder, staff feeder play or staff feeder young kids. Uh, so obviously the first he would go in, and the uh, the staff would stay out and, and and play the games, and the staff never ever lost. And if they if they were losing, the games used to carry on a little bit longer. Yeah, but we used to pick the best young ones. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie and Steve, <laughs> and I remember when I, I first came, uh, I signed on the the Wednesday. Saturday we played. Man U in the League Cup at the Charity Shield at Wembley. Uh, they gave us a couple of days off to go back up the road to sort things out. I went back up the road, so I missed a couple of days, Tuesday training or something. Came back on Wednesday or Thursday for training, and the first team were off. So I'm training with the kid. And then that was my debut at Wembley. The Wembley at Melwood. Remember Wembley yeah. at Melwood? That was that was where they played the kids, and that was me making my debut. By the way, <laughs> that they talk about how did Liverpool escape a lot of injuries when they had all the success? <laughs> because if you were injured, you had to train with them, and you had to do their running. And that was a good excuse not to be injured. By the way, even if you were injured, you never told them. And it was like Bob Paisley would be in goal, but he never had gloves. He has mittens. 
So it was only his thumb sticking up and the rest of it. <laughs> uh, Ronnie Moran, uh, old Tom Saunders, who was Tom. a fantastic, uh, fantastic brains and a really good fellow. Was part of it. John Benison, who did the kids, would play as well. Ron Yates, when he came in. No, no, I'm not talking about when I was playing, but when I was became manager, I, I gave Yates a job after the first year, I think, as chief scout. Um, but he would, when we went back then, and I was part of the staff then, he used to play. But I think they put him against us. <laughs> He could have been too impressed we had this. <laughs> but they, they all they played and they played the kids and they picked the best kids. And I think yourself and Mark would only be in at night time then, wouldn't you? Yeah. But when they come in during the day, they made sure they were nurturing. You, 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 you never ever lost, though. Oh, no, no, they didn't. No, they didn't admit it anyway. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> When they admit they lost, and if they lost, if they were losing, it was next goal. Next goal, <laughs> yeah. next goal. Yeah. Eight to get us back in it. <laughs> Playing till five o'clock on a Friday. Got a game Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Playing till five, <laughs> half seven at night. The game's finished. <laughs> oh, they were. They were, That was. That was brilliant then. I, I love what you just said. Pitch. It wasn't even a pitch, was it? It no, wasn't even no. out or anything. Hey, well, this is Wembley. You just called it Wembley. And what about the, the, uh, the other pitch on the other side, which was the pig's The, the, the cow's pit. Yeah. Uh, aye. And then Shanks put an old weather pitch in, didn't they? Yeah, the gravel, that, yeah. That red, red gravel pitch. And the boy said, Shanks put that in. When I came, I said, well, why would you put that in? And he said, because it's an old weather pitch. And Shanks thought you could play in it in all weathers. <laughs> the only time you could play in it was when it was about that six inches deep. No, but it was too hard. It was rock hard, wasn't it? Oh, God. Have fe- you fell uh, over on Gerard, that? Here, Gerard done the best thing. He built the, the changing facilities and the dressing rooms and everything in there, didn't he? That, that was on the old weather, yeah. But I remember the old weather pitch, actually. If you fell over on that, you were picking oh. gravel out of your knees for weeks, I'm telling you. We used to play on that. We used to play on pitches like that in Glasgow. And by the way, in Glasgow there was bricks sticking through them and glass <laughs> them. So you never fell over too often. King Kenny, can I ask? We're talking about management, and I know a lot's been said about Jurgen, and, and you spoke, and, and you were an emotional man when when Liverpool finally won the title a few months back. One man who I often think's a little bit forgotten, uh, similar to you, who's, who's treaded both paths, Celtic and Liverpool, Brendan Rodgers. Give me your views on him. Is he someone in your belief that gets enough credit for the job that he did at Liverpool Football Club? I thought he got credit for what he did at Liverpool. I can't see how... Oh, I see. A, I see a lot of Liverpool fans. A lot of Liverpool fans that will say, "Oh, Gerard carried that team. Suarez carried that team. Raheem Sterling carried that team." But that's the same way. Any any level of football that's been successful or any good, the punters always have the favourites, and very seldom is it the manager. It's always one of the players, isn't it? And they're not going to blame one of the. They're not going to blame Stephen or blame. Uh, Suarez for anything the, the manager is the one that gets the, the brunt of everything yeah. but he did certainly move forward um, before Jürgen came in they were moving forward mm. but I don't I mean credit he, go, he, he did a great job at Celtic they won he was part of the the, oh, the, the triple, the, the 12, the triple treble was it? the triple treble yeah uh, um, no it wasn't tri- triple it was quadruple well, it was Neil Lennon. Yeah, Neil yeah, Lennon no, yeah, com- yeah, completed but... that. Yeah, well, he made it. Brendan made a contribution to that as well. Yeah. Of course, oh, yeah. Uh, and then when he left, when he left Celtic, that wasn't very well received, was it? Which really is a compliment. Yeah. Mm. Good point. Good point. Oh. Uh, so Ken, so can can we talk about obviously Liverpool now? So. I mean, Jamie, uh, this guy, this obviously podcast is before uh, obviously the City game. We recorded it before the City game. And obviously Jamie Carragher this week said now the top four is now the aim for Liverpool. 
So Liverpool will still have obviously aspirations and ambitions of winning a title, and it gets harder every single day. But obviously, because the the, the table is so, so tight between the the third and the you know the eighth team, uh, are Liverpool in a fight for the top four at the minute? Uh, well, I think everything you're fighting for, aren't you? You're fighting to do as best you possibly can, and the recent the recent run, apart from the two victories in London, there the recent runs been uh, pretty painful for everybody to take. They've not got the points that they'd be looking for. That they would, with due respect to who they were playing, the teams that that took the points off them weren't the ones that you'd expect them to lose the points to, but. They're competing and they'll compete for as best they possibly can, especially Sunday against Man City. They're going to compete. But when you, I mean, injuries are part and parcel of football, and you're not going to you're not going to use that as a as a complaint or as a reason. But there are uh, extenuating circumstances here because if you get three injuries in the one position, centre back. It's hard to deal with. You can deal with three. Your three top players might go out. Like Man City have got De Bruyne out, they've got Aguero out, uh, and one of the centre backs out as well. So they can complete cause three different places. But mm. we've had to put two strong midfield players, especially Jordan, the captain, who does a, a great job in the middle of the pitch. And for being you had to put them into centre back. So they're playing 20, 30 yards further back than what they would normally play. So it's there's no choice. You've no you've no got centre backs. You've a couple of the young lads have come in and done particularly well. They, they've they've no been a, they've no been a, a, a real. You wouldn't really notice that what they were. They're only kids. Like <clears throat> Nat Nat Phillips is was in loan last year in in the Bundesliga somewhere, and he was he had a good season over there. Um, the other one, had, he went to Kidderminster Harriers on loan. Uh, Reese Williams. Reese, oh, yeah. Kidderminster Harriers on loan for a year, and come back and he's playing Premiership. It's a huge step up for 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 him. It's not so bad for Reese. Um, hey, for for that, it's, it's harder for Reese mm. because it, it's, the gap's huge. Yeah. But he did he did well when he played, um, and. To try and cover one position with, with its three injuries is, is a big loss, and it's obviously um, for Liverpool they've just they've just got to go on with it and do the best they can. But I think that they've done I think they've done particularly well to to get where they are, and for some reason I think also the the fact that there's no crowd at Anfield helps the opposition. Yeah. I agree with that, Kenny. So a top four then. Would you be content with top four? You'd be content with Champions League. You wouldn't be content if you don't win it. Mm. But you, what would you do? There's extenuating circumstances again for that, isn't it? Yeah. By the way, you've got to look at your own your own club and think to yourself, well, how, how do we sort this out for ourselves? But also at the same time, you can't take away Man City. They've had 20 games there on the spin League and Cup. Uh, they've only lost four goals. And they were the teams that were struggling. That was the team that they said was struggling before that. Yeah. It's a struggle, isn't it? 20 games. So they're, they're a wee bit of a gap between them and us. And if we have any, if, if we've got a chance of winning the league, we have to beat them on Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Your old mucker, Kenny. You won't probably thank Graham. I'm sure you've seen the comments. He was he was saying in midweek that if you played alongside Mo Salah, given the fact that he's a bit as as you would say up in Scotland, he, he's a, sometimes a bit of a hogger. He likes to. He's obsessed with scoring goals that you wouldn't have tolerated it, and the two of you would have been coming to blows in the dressing room. You like players to to share the load a little bit. I mean, <laughs> what would you say to that? What would you say to Graham's view? Is that a, a fair one? Well, I like people to be 
to share well, yeah, that, that, that you would have been coming to blows with Mo had you been playing with him just because he loves the limelight to himself. He's he's a bit obsessed with scoring goals when sometimes there are players in better positions that might actually you know score the goals for but you. So the first argument I would have had with Graham, with Charlie. So uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't think you. For me, I, I don't I don't know. I never heard what he said, but certainly. Certainly had a few arguments with him in the dressing room at half yeah, time, so I don't think I could have fitted another one in. <laughs> <clears throat> Mo Salah though, Kenny. Like I mean, you know, we and Robbie were talking about it in the previous pods about the the fact that Liverpool. You've mentioned their injury problems. The front three as good as they've been, and and listen, Mo's still scoring goals. What what has it been about the the front three this year that perhaps just hasn't quite clicked? as it has in previous years? I don't know. If, if anybody would know, it would be Jürgen. Mm. And uh, just when you hit a bad run, and when you think that you, you get past it, with the victory at Tottenham, the victory at West Ham, who, are going, who were going quite well at the time. Um, and it, it'd be scored like, the second and third goals against West Ham were fantastic team goals. So, and I don't think... There's much changed other than, and it, people might laugh at, uh, just a bit of luck you need. And the luck gives you confidence and belief. But as soon as you something starts to go badly, you, you look and you think, should I shoot? Should I pass? Yeah. Right? And then you take a wee second, extra second to delay with the thought process, and it's gone. Whatever was there before is gone. And everybody goes through spells like that. I mean, I, I scored a goal at Brighton and it was my first goal for months. And it was a header for a corner. And I've never done that in my life. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so everybody's going to go through a time when it's not going so well for you. But when it when there's two or three at the same time, going through the same, then it's difficult. Yeah. And the front three players have been fantastic for Liverpool. And the, yeah. and the, I see the success that they, they had and enjoyed over the past couple of years. This year might be a disappointment, but then it might be a disappointment in the league and you could end up winning the Champions League. So I wouldn't underestimate that front three, I'm sure, although everything's not going as well for them as what they would like to. I'm sure they've, they've got plenty of ammunition to come back and they've got plenty of credit in the bank as well for what they've done previously for us. Definitely, definitely. Kenny, just back back to obviously the... Uh... You know the Liverpool management role again. So we've mentioned Blackburn, and that was obviously a great achievement. What would what would you say your finest achievement is from a Liverpool perspective would be? Would it be you being a, a double winner as a player manager, maybe getting reappointed the, the, the manager the second time in obviously January two thousand eleven, or would it be getting the stand named after you? Because <laughs> many good. many many people who get stands named after them, they're normally dead. How does it feel to get a stand named after you while whilst you're still alive? Um, well, if my name was East or West or North, <laughs> I would have got a lot more stands named after you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... I mean, it's... You get embarrassed, really. You get humble. I never, I never call the stand by my name. I call it Kevin Road or the Centenary. Yeah. You can't call it. I mean, you can't call it. After, you can't say to somebody, "I'll see you," and name your stand, can you? So you, <laughs> you can. The, the sick Henry Dagley, and that that, that obviously no, brings brings me back to that other question. So obviously, you don't call the stand the sick Henry Dagley stand. Now, obviously, the the cop are famous for for one of the the, the most mega songs ever. Obviously, you'll never walk alone. Uh, but you also sing you'll uh, the fields of Anfield Road. Uh, Do you sing along to that? No. <laughs> no. Chris, the, the song goes, uh, the fields of Anfield Road where once we watched King Kerry play. He I definitely reckon... sings it. He definitely <laughs> sings it. Oh, no, no. Even the grandkids don't know a play. <laughs> <laughs> They're starting to learn that. I, got to, I, 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 would be get, I would be getting the grandkids to sleep singing that song to them. <laughs> I'm getting to sleep just be talking to them. <laughs> no, but the most I, the, the mo- most important moment for me was signing for Liverpool. Everything else came onwards and upwards after that. 
Uh, and it, that's no in any way, shape or form undermining what happened at, at Celtic. We really, really appreciate everything that Celtic had done for us. Uh, the success that we had and uh, they've still got a, a special place in, in our lives anyway. So moving on to Liverpool and going to an icon, iconic moment there, just them think that you were good enough to go and play for them and represent them. Uh, was was a turn, was a if you don't get that, you don't get anything else that follows. And the thing that follows on is there's been a fairy tale as well there. I mean, you could never imagine growing up and I mean, never mind being a teenager thinking something like that. Even when you're an adult thinking something like this is going to happen to you, you would never, you'd be taken away, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so you just appreciate everything you've done, but also you, you realise that if it wasn't for the benefit and the help of others, then you wouldn't have done it either. So it's not just about the individual. You con- the contribution you made to, to Liverpool is a fraction of what they've made to the Douglas family life. What a wonderful answer that is, Kenny. And, and listen, Rob, I, I want to ask you while you're while we've got Kenny with us. Kenny there talks about the day he signed for Liverpool Football Club. I wonder as well because I believe there's only one goal between the both of you. Is that right in the in the all time scoring list for Liverpool? I, I actually thought it was a few more in all fairness, but when I say a few more, and this sounds ridiculous, I thought it was about maybe two or three more. Which I know I'm clutching, Christopher. I really am. But when I think of you mentioned Kenny as probably the greatest ever, and I don't think this is an argument, to be honest, as probably the greatest ever Liverpool player. Uh, and you've got probably one of the other great Liverpool players, Steven Gerrard. Is, yeah. he's, I think he's he's ahead of me on the all-time uh, list. So I think it's Steven, uh, myself, and then Kenny. Now, I'm sandwiched in between two greats. Uh, and for me, as a, I, I remember my goal that I think it took me level, I think, with Kenny. It was against West Brom. It was when I re-signed for Liverpool. Uh, up at the Hawthorns, uh, I I got level with Kenny as uh, one of the, you know, the top goal scorers for Liverpool, and for that that for me is just the pinnacle. When you when your when your name is next to someone as iconic as as Sir Kenny, I I, I mean I can I could have retired there and then I really could have done. Some people thought you did. <laughs> 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 I, I actually can't even yeah, argue with you. That, that's the thing. That's unfair. You had two goals at it. I yeah, that's goals. true. You had two goals at it. That's and, true. But you know, if, if at first you don't succeed, try again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I never got two goals. Yeah, well, you, yes, you did. As a manager, you did. Ah, oh, but I couldn't score for the bench. <laughs> you no, know, no, but you still managed him. To, to be fair, you, yeah, you could have, you could have picked yourself. You could have picked yourself. You could have went in as a manager. You could have said, "I'm, I'm putting myself down as a player manager again." Now that that can would have been a sight, wouldn't it? Can I get a warm stick on the pitch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! Listen, I, 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 I wouldn't put many goals on board, and I wouldn't care really. Yeah, did I you not? Was that something you didn't look into, Kenny? It was obviously medals and trophies. That's what matters, right? No. Uh, that's I not like you, Rob. Rob, you counted every single one of your goals, no, didn't you? But, but yeah, but that, that's not to say that Robbie's wrong or I'm right. It's just to be, yeah. I, I, we've got the goals. You score the goals, you get your rewards. The goals are more important when you when it means something for the team, as Robbie would allude to as well. You don't get any point scoring three goals and getting beat 4 3, is it? <laughs> True. <laughs> so, the. The success is, if you're contributing to the success, whether it's assists or whether it's defending or whether it's scoring, it doesn't matter. You need contribution for everybody before you're going to get what you really want. That's a tour of the city with a trophy in the bus. Mm. I think I think that says everything about you. I, I, we, we did point out how humble you are and how incredibly normal you are. But what, what a, another question, it's a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek one. If... If I was to speak to, you know, many, many people and who, who's the most famous person they've ever met, I reckon a lot of them, a lot of Liverpool fans would say you. Now, who is the most famous person you've ever met? How do you define fame? Well, it, listen... It's Star, your, you were it, starstruck, it, it, yeah. It, it's your answer. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah Jack Nicholas, but yeah. No. What What about um, Have you ever met Frank Sinatra? Oh, I stay there now. <laughs> I just coming up to my way, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I, I would. I wouldn't go there. But is it, it would, would Jack Nicholas or Jack Nicholas or Jack Nicholson be yours? Jack Nicholas, golfer. I met yeah. him at he owned the golf course at Glen Eagles, and I was up uh, playing in the opening day. Uh, you meet you meet a load of people, didn't you? You're just lucky you meet a load of people. But certainly for for me, then the golf and Jack Nicholas being there, and even now you meet the the, the obviously they're all. Younger than you than me anyway. Now, the golfers and whatever, <clears throat> and it's great to see a lot of them are just, just normal. Mm. No, yeah, but we, so, them. So Kenny, though, with all Rob, due respect, Rob, though, Rob, 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 I don't know who the the most iconic fella that I've yeah. ever met. So Kenny, so with all due respect, though, all these all these young golfers would still be absolutely delighted meeting you. Yeah, they they, they would still be on your. The, the people, the most famous person they've ever met would be you. I think they'd be more impressed off the pitch than on the golf course. <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 be impressed. I, they'll be impressed. They'll be impressed. No, I, I disagree with you. We, we played myself, Kenny, and um, it was Stephen Henry, actually. We played, obviously, a uh, a charity game of golf. Uh, I think we played with, was it Mark Warren? Mark, Mark Warren, I. Mark golfer. And uh, Kenny, Kenny chipped in from 120 yards in front of a little crowd as well, so... Hey, hey! So he's uh, he's not a bad golfer as well. He's he's oh, handy. That's one shot and thousands of rounds. No chance, <laughs> no chance. Uh, well, it's just pro- probably typical well, of you then, isn't it? What we had the golf event where I went a wee bit tricky was we have the invitation at Hillside Golf Club, and I just invited anybody that was was running about <laughs> never got never got in the frame right to win the invitation and big Hansen would he would be a wee bit more tactical in who he invited so i said right this is it this year i'm no i'm no going friendship right i'm no going for somebody that that's running about the area that i'm saying i'm going to ask me roby so i asked the wee man do you want fancy playing then but i help help okay then Come on, up you come. He was off 10. <laughs> yes. 10 or 12. Might have been 18, actually. <laughs> <laughs> ah, if you could have got 18, you would have taken it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 won, we won a few was shots. That, was, was that the first time you've won the Hillside Invitational? That's the only time. Ah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> Aye, yeah, have you got a picture of us on the wall? Next to, your, oh. next, to, next to that European Cup you won? <laughs> well, because we, we leave, didn't we? Yeah. You put the card in and you go home. And if you go back at night... To the <laughs> dinner, without oh. the flash on, without the flash on. Uh, there. We, uh, so I got a bit tactical then. Brilliant. Well, when we have, obviously I'm the member at Wallace, so when I get home, uh, Sir Ken, you come over with, uh, with me and we'll have a game and... And we'll get you in the the Wallasey Invitational, and we'll we win that as well. We used to play there at you Wallasey. Did. Yeah, we used to yeah. go over there to play the first one. The road's on the right hand side. Uh huh. I've been doing that road a few times. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, no, this year, well, twenty twenty, not this year, last year, twenty twenty, the golf golf season. I've actually got my name twice on the on the Wallasey board. Oh, well done, Rob. Yeah, thank you. Is that this man is banned? <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I've, I've got one of them trops in there, them uh, wooden fences to park my horse. As well, <laughs> if, you're, if, you're up the, if you're up the board twice, your handicap will be decimated. Oh, it's come down. It has come down, yeah. Oh, it does he tell you what it's come down to, but. <laughs> <laughs> Bandit Fowler. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, I don't know. Oh, this is a wee bit difficult, this shot. Three feet. <laughs> 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 right, I, th- I think we've, uh, we've had more than enough of your time. Yeah, to we catch, have. So, so I, listen, I can't thank you enough. I obviously love your company, always have done, always will do. Uh, absolute gentleman, 
absolute player. Uh, but what I'll just say now, you are an absolute gentleman. I love chatting with you. Always have done. Always will.